Twitter shares on the move once again this morning, and Elon Musk could be in some hot water. Late last Friday, the Tesla founder tweeted about his plans to conduct his own research to determine the amount of Twitter users that are actually bots, tweeting that his team will do a random sample of 100 followers of Twitter and invited others to do the same. Then on Saturday, Musk tweeted that Twitter legal just called to complain that I violated their non-disclosure agreement by revealing the bot's check sample size as 100, because in that whole back and forth, he said the reason he was using that is it's because that's what Twitter used to get some of these numbers. Anyway, for more on the Twitter takeover twists and turns, let's bring in Jay Clayton. He's former chairman of the SEC, non-executive chair of the board at Apollo Global Management and a CNBC contributor. And, and Jay, we can talk about these issues that he's going to have with Twitter, with the NDA, but I still think the bigger issue he may face is with the SEC, with the on again, off again, and especially the comments he was tweeting on Friday where he said, um, yeah, we need to reevaluate this. Deal's still on. He went back to say later, but this is the type of thing where we saw some massive market moves. The stock was down 25% on his first tweet that people thought meant he was calling off the deal or trying to renegotiate. Well, good morning, Becky. And and look, I think you've you've as usual framed this this very well. Where where are we in terms of this transaction? And and that is we're between signing the, an agreed deal between the buyer and the seller. Um, the buyer being Mr. Musk, the seller being the company. Um, and there are a number of things that have to happen between that agreed deal and a closing. During that period, um, what we usually have is a lot of cooperation around disclosures to the marketplace as to what's happening between signing and closing. Uh, that's covered in the agreement. The merger agreement really has just two components. One is how locked up is the deal? Um, when can a buyer um, you know, pull away from the deal? When can a seller pull away from the deal to get a better deal? And how do you behave between signing and closing? And what we're focusing on here is that. Um, that is, both to get the deal done, but also to ensure that people comply with their obligations to the marketplace. So I'm certain that the company, um, the buyer, and the regulators are looking today at whether those obligations to make full, fair, and accurate disclosure um, have been satisfied. What's the problem with him tweeting this stuff out without doing a filing to the SEC? I mean, it, you could say it's a public commentary area. All of this is there. but. Do you think there needs to be the SEC filings that go along before you make any public comment on this? Well, well, that is always a judgment as to whether a, a disclosure that you're making rises to the level where it should be included in the company side on some type of Form 8K. Um, that's the, the technical term for the company making a filing that's subject to um, liability under the Exchange Act or um, with a potential buyer. Uh, in this case, on their Schedule 13 filings. Uh, right. That is the judgment that you typically make. Let, let's cut to the chase. I mean, the stock was down 25% on one tweet. A little bit later, it was up um, and only down 10% on a second tweet that went there. The reality is people are losing money if they're following these tweets and going along with it. The SEC is supposedly investigating some of these things, but they haven't done anything yet. And that's led a lot of people to say the SEC is just toothless here. There are investors who are betting on this. Um, making bets or making uh, trades based on this, they're losing money as a result. Is there something that needs to be done, and, and how quickly would that be done? Look, like like always, Becky, I'm not going to get ahead of my former colleagues at the SEC, but I'm certain they're looking at it in exactly the context I just laid out, which is in this period when you have shareholders, other financial professionals, financing providers, and the like, all watching the the probability of the transaction closing. There, there is an obligation that when you speak, to speak accurately and completely. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.